Hey everyone, it's episode 15 of the FDS series and uh, we're going to do some updates. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a cap, it's because I was playing drums in the music room at work and bashed my head. You see that? Lovely. So instead of looking at that or a plaster the whole time, just like in one of our earlier videos, let's go. Okay, and the first one is to rename Design Tokens Library that we're in now to Foundations. Let's just come over here, go to Rename, change this to Foundations. That's it. Well, not really, because if we zoom out and come over to the cover, this is still called Design Tokens. So let's copy and paste this over here. All right, now that's done. Okay, the next change is separate the web and app type collections for better control over app components and designs. Update app library textiles to the new collection. Now, what that means is we've had four modes, right? So we've had web, desktop, and mobile, and then iOS and Android, and they're all in the same collection. Then we've had the same set of textiles, Right, so the web ones that used to just be heading and text would control those styles and you could switch between any one of those modes. But when it comes to putting together the components app library, that doesn't work too well. What you want to do there is just have the iOS mode as the default mode. You don't want to have to override it every time you drop in a component or override the components default state before you even publish that library. So that's what I've already done and I've already done it because it would have taken a very long time. But let's go and see what's changed. If we come to the variables, you can see that there is a semantic type web and we only have the desktop and mobile modes in there now. We have another collection called semantic type app and that only has iOS and Android in it. All the same names, but now we just have the SF Pro Text and Roboto ones here. And then enter a course for the other two. And if you're wondering how I duplicated the collections, because Figma can't do that natively, I used a plugin called Variables Pro to export just the semantic type collection that we had previously as a JSON file to my desktop. I then went and renamed the collection to type web. And then I went to the import tab, then selected the JSON file, which created another collection that I then called app. Then I deleted the modes that we didn't need. And we ended up where we are here. Okay. But for this to work, you also need to duplicate the text styles, which means we just had the heading and text here. Now I had to put them into a group called web, right? duplicate this file, go over to that file, rename it app, then come back here after copying that set of styles and paste them here. And then we're not even finished. If you come to app, we then had to remap all of these manually. So family was remapped to semantic type app family. And then all of these were mapped to their uh, correct ones that are in that app collection for all of the headings and all of the text styles, right? If you see that in action, let's go to the typography page. And now if we go to web, we've just got type web, desktop or mobile. This has been overridden to mobile. We come over here, then we've got the default being type app iOS, and this has been overridden to Android. If I switch it back, go back there. So now we only have two modes in each collection, right? Let's go back. And with that done, we can now publish this library and then use it in the components app to change those styles to the default iOS one. Let's go up to here where we publish the changes. Select publish. I'm gonna put updates the 8th of the 6th, 25. That's uh, Australian or New Zealand date there. Uh, the Americans would turn those first two around, of course. And then we're gonna put in 
change name of design tokens library to foundations make sure the spelling is correct and then duplicate the type collections and styles to separate web and app okay and let's publish Okay, now let's go to the components app library, accept those changes. Let's just select show updates for all pages, update all, see what happens. Okay, if we zoom into the button, we can see that it's got a deleted mode. So let's select all of the text inside the large button. And you can see it's got web text owl semi bold. We want app text owl semi bold. So that'll be this one. Great, you saw that just subtly change from enter to SF Pro text. Let's do the same thing here. And we're going to change web text M to app text M semi bold. Okay, now when we select this component, its mode is now set to auto iOS. That's what we want, right? Now we have to do that to the other components that this is affected. So if we go to button pill, it's got its deleted mode there as well. So let's do the same thing. App text. L, semi bold. App text M, semi bold. Okay, that's fixed that as well. Fantastic. I don't think button icon has a mode. No, because there's no text in it. Button group. Let's see. Okay, that's reset as well because the buttons inside it have been fixed. Button group pill. Doesn't have one either. What about the sticky button though? Well, that's fixed too. All right. And in this frame, let's select the text. We need app text L. Put an E in there so we get it. Regular, great. And then select it. Does it have the right thing? Yes, let's change this to Android. Awesome, that's fixed as well. But we've got one more change and that's using Figma's new progressive blur feature in the sticky button. So if you remember in the last episode, to be able to create that effect where you have a progressive blur, I had to put a gradient mask into a blur layer to actually achieve that. Now, with that latest update, we don't need that anymore. Let's go to the gradient mask and delete it. Then go to the blur. You can see its effect over here, background blur. Just change that to progressive. We've got start at zero and end at eight, which gives us the exact same effect. So great, we can come over here, change this style to gradient blur. Right? We might as well change the name of it too. Let's give this progressive as well instead of gradient. So when we select it, you can see that over here. That's it for the updates. In the next video, we'll be doing checkbox and radio components. I hope you're all looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!